Your plane just crashed in the wilds of Manitoba. The wreckage is cooling, night is falling, and you can hear predators closing in. You search for supplies but find nothing but antiquated Game Boy peripherals. Which means you have nothing to be worried about. To survive this disaster, we're going to take a page out of Gunpei Yokoi's book. He knew that just because a technology was a little older didn't mean it was useless. In fact, his whole design theory relied on tech that wasn't cutting edge, a philosophy he called lateral thinking with withered technology. Take slightly out of date technology that is cheaper and easier to program and use it in interesting ways. The result was weird, great niche accessories like a barcode reader, a portable oscilloscope, a scooter engine diagnostic software. But none of that garbage is gonna save you. The sun is setting, the cold is starting to sink in, and northern Manitoba is about to get very dark. Almost as dark as your Game Boy's screen. Without a backlight, the notoriously dark screen isn't going to be useful for stumbling through the underbrush. Luckily, the market was quick to provide accessories that shed light on this. There were flashlights, deluxe flashlights, or the Game Boy equivalent of a mech suit. So how do you choose the one best for your unique catastrophe? Simple. You want the one that will best discourage predators. The blob light. Released for Halloween in the year 2000, this light was both fun and frightening, according to Robert Reinick, Nyko's VP of Marketing. Its external camouflage and internal eyespot mimicry will help you either evade or scare off Manitoba's large polar bear population. Come the dawn, it'll be time to start exploring Manitoba's muskeg swamps. Progress will be a lot slower if you don't grab these officially licensed Nintendo platform shoes. Commissioned from shoe designer Helen Red Richards, these Pika shoes were chasing a trend revived by the Spice Girls. There were six varieties in all, although no photos remain of the chunky green platforms mentioned in this article. It's possible that nobody ever actually owned a pair of these shoes because they were all made to order. You had to call Nintendo to commission a pair. But they were shown in a few art galleries in the UK, which means these are exhibition quality art objects you're waiting in. Before we begin to select stitches, let's review the operation of the Game Boy. Your first instinct might be to scoff at the idea of a Game Boy sewing machine, much less carting one around Canada's lush forests. But this peripheral is not as strange as it seems, and the northern parts of Manitoba are subarctic, so you'll want to craft some winter wear. The Jaguar New Yell and the American version the singer Isaac were pretty standard analog machines. But they were beefed up by interfacing with the Game Boy, which acted like a microprocessor. Raku Raku Mission, the peripheral's game, let the user program intricate stitch work, like patterns, buttonholes, and even custom designs. I know what you're saying, gamers. Jenna, my sewing machine has all of this built in. Mine does too. But in the early 2000s, this was still the dope shit. Plus, the new Yell and Isaac retailed for less than comparably powerful machines, even accounting for the additional purchase of the Game Boy. That's lateral thinking at work. Connecting the device to a Game Boy, music player, or video, the child is excited to receive a new toy. Once you've got the basic creature comforts covered, it's time to start thinking about long-term survival, which is why you want the Pedisedate, which is a bad name. Let's just get that out there. It's weird but it is exactly what it sounds like. The Pedisedate was meant to distract children while they were gently knocked unconscious before surgery. Basically, it was just a pair of headphones that connected to a Game Boy with a snorkel-like mask that gassed the wearer with nitrous oxide, like a fun prank from the Joker. Specifically meant for dental procedures, it also monitored a patient's oxygenation and respiratory rates. Plus, check out that late 90s Bondi Blue electronics aesthetic. From performing self-surgery to gassing a polar bear so you can remove a thorn from its paw so it'll teach you to hunt and you become lifelong companions, the uses of the pedicidate are endless. But maybe you're like me, physically impervious after falling in the river Styx as a child, but highly susceptible to mental illness. Well, there are at least three patents for Game Boy games that monitor psychological health. Unfortunately, unlike the Pedicidate, it seems like none of these made it into production. Oh, I guess you'll just have to go to therapy, a practice every human should have to do regardless of how long they've been trapped in Canada's backcountry. All of these suggestions have, of course, been 100% legitimate. 
but Gyogon Tanchiki pocket sonar is perhaps the most legitimate peripheral for surviving Manitoba's lake-freckled wilderness. This Japan-exclusive fishing accessory was released by Bandai in 1998. The cart had built-in sonar that could probe the water acoustically up to 20 meters. That info was fed into the cartridge to generate an image with all the deets on hot single fish in your area. Gyogon Tanchiki also holds the distinction of being the first sonar-enabled game accessory. According to Guinness World Records 2009 Gamers Edition, the only new source I trust. Like the sewing machine peripheral, the pocket sonar was a good value for the time because it used the Game Boy as a cheap, easily available microprocessor. Although withered technology meant the Game Boy didn't have, like, the toppest of top-line graphics, it did make it accessible, the true people's handheld. So after you bury the leftover fish bones from dinner, curl up with Yurik, your polar bear familiar, in your leaf-stitched tent, take a moment to appreciate how Yokoi's philosophy brought so much comfort to this stark Manitoba wilderness.